Welcome back, it's just, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Today we're finally going to talk about Batman Year One. This is take two <laughs> of us doing Batman Year One. We would originally plan on doing it, I don't know, like a year ago? Well, yeah. Well, and uh, you know what? We just There's so many great books out there, we were like, hey, you know what? Let's let's let's, let's push it. You know what? Let's, let's save just it. not. Yeah, the Batman. Can we not Can we just stop with Batman? Yeah. Okay. Would you classify uh, Red Sun as a Superman book, though? Yes, but, and not Batman. But, That's right. Even right. though he's a major character in, he's, he's in it. He's there. He doesn't even make it to the end. But his I mean, he's he's in it. The he's title cool. Red Sun Superman. <laughs> yeah. There's an Elseworlds book where Kal El lands in Gotham. And okay. He's, and he's raised by the Waynes. Mm. Is that a Batman book or a Superman book? Mm. That's ooh, it's both. It, it's a Batman. It's called Superman. Superman book. Okay. Speeding bullets. Was well, Batman in the book, or is he, he just like he becomes Batman? Does he save the Bruce Wayne because there. he's no. super fast? No. Hmm. No, he's only eight. He doesn't really. He hasn't gotten used to his powers yet. That would be kind of cool though if he if Superman saved. The Waynes. The Waynes, and thus prevented Batman from existing. Yes. And Bruce is just like a brat. Yeah. A spoiled rich kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, when they when they, uh, when they they collect young Kal-El, they name him Bruce. Oh. So he they just don't have kids. They just choose oh. not to have them. Oh, interesting. Oh, so no, there's never that would be, be brilliant Batman. If, they, if, they, if they picked Cal up first, named him Bruce, and then had a kid, and that's really Bruce Wayne? That's a different, that's a different uh, tangent. That's really cool, though. <laughs> That book, by the way, is great. We'll do it on Baggers one day. Cool. Superman Speeding Bullets, set of print. We'll add to the list of Superman or Batman, either one. That'll go on both lists. Of them. Batman vs. Predator. Is that a Batman? Yeah, it's Batman. <laughs> Batman Year One came out in 1987. It was written by Frank Miller with art by David Mazzuchelli. Yeah. <laughs> Mazzuchelli. Mazzuchelli, yeah. I have such a problem reading his name. I don't know why. I think it's because there's so many duplicated duplicated letters. Yeah. Yeah. There's like three duplicated letters? Yeah. It's ridiculous. And also, the way it's written, the L's look like Mm I's because there's such a tiny little bit at the bottom. It's almost (laughs) Mazzucchini. Mazzucchini. Well, two and a half years. Well, yes. Uh, A couple years? Yeah, I think a year. A year? Well, it's interesting because 86. 86. uh, It is the retcon for Batman's origin post. Crisis on Infinite Earths. They created the new world. Frank Miller comes in. He's like, here's what happened. And it takes like four issues. Interestingly enough, wasn't called Batman Year One at the time. It was just called Year One. And it was just a chapter in the Batman books. Mm-hmm. I think it was like Batman like 401 or something like that. Like just oh. in the chronology, just your regularly scheduled Batman just stopped. <laughs> and then <laughs> this happened and then resumed oh, wow. using this as the origin point. Okay. So that was still the origin for Batman, the official origin. This has been the official origin for Batman since since Zero Hour. Zero Hour started the trend of, let's fuck with year one. Let's take this beautiful, perfect thing and then just put our little little our little stint on it. We're comic book editors in nineteen ninety six. We probably know what we're doing. Right. So until you Well, we're losing to spawn. Yeah. And in fact (laughs) and in fact, uh After that, they uh, people have been adding to it or drawing from it since then. I mean, like, look no further than Batman fucking begins. Yeah. This is the groundwork for it. Yeah. And in fact, this has been so influential that before Batman begins, Warner Brothers approached uh, Darren Aronofsky of Requiem for a Dream fame. And they were like, we would like you oh my to God. do our Batman reboot. And we'd like it to be Batman Year One. And they, they brought in Frank fucking Miller to help oh my develop God. it, and it was garbage. Yeah, you gotta be kidding be. me! It was garbage in a way I've I have not seen Batman in a while. Where like, okay, so there's this guy named Bruce Wayne, and he eventually becomes Batman. Those are the things that are preserved. <laughs> well, why would you use Year One? Well, because it's a great it's, book, and just throw away all the things all the that make it great. Stuff. I don't know. There I would were some love other... to see that, though. Oh, my God. And I'd like to have, like, an alternate universe window through which I could grab DVDs, mm-hmm. like Firefly Season 2 and this Batman Year One movie. Like, it's got to be so batshit insane. It's... No, not no, pun, no pun intended, of course. But it has to be so much so that, like, it's got to be great. It's, it's got to be a fun time. I mean, like, it would look amazing. Because Aronofsky is so good. And I think he wanted to make it for, like, less than a million dollars. Mm. Which Warner Bros. is like, get fucked. Like, they were yeah, just so angry. Fucking Batman. Yeah. We're not doing that. And the idea was, like, Bruce Wayne was homeless. Like, he had no money. And he moves in with this 
with this garage owner named Al, short for Alfred, and he lives in the attic, and he, like, leaves the garage at night to be Batman, and his suit is more, like, knight in armor type Batman with, like, a fucking thing over his face. It just... Weird. There's art for it out there. Here it is. Jesus. This is Batman in his purest distilled form. It's amazing that they used it as a groundwork for continuity Mm. because of how kind of generic it is. (laughs) Like, so the idea is, it's really more about James Gordon than it is about Batman. Batman is the main element in it, but not the main character. He's like the driving force. He's the driving force. He's the catalyst for which everything happens. Right. Real real quick, this was the start of continuity for Batman after Crisis, but also for Frank Miller's universe, right? Yeah. He had already done Dark Knight Returns. Right, right. But this is like this is the, the beginning. origin of that Batman yes. as well, right? So yeah. you could almost have those like two universes diverging, right? That's right. Continuity and Frank Miller's Batman both start with this book. That's right. Uh, Frank Miller actually, as we've talked about before on other Frank Miller Batman stories, uh, has his own Bat universe. And they include Dark Knight Returns, this, uh, All-Star Batman, Spawn Batman, uh, and... <laughs> Uh, as naturally, such, classic, naturally, he yeah. wrote it, so it happened, and it's yep. in his stories. Uh, but yeah, this is this was the beginning for Batman post Crisis, and also in the Millerverse, right? And yet, two very different, Batman totally different Batman from this origin. from this one origin That's point. Cool. It's amazing that such greatness can come from this, mm. given the Millerverse. <laughs> we got two stories here. In one of them, uh, Jim Gordon and his wife Barbara are uh, moving to Gotham, or have just moved to Gotham. Yeah. He got a transfer from Chicago, and... And it's seven. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> and Batman is 25, and coming back from his training. Oh. And he's like, I'm ready. I'm coming back to the city to to sh- kick the shit out of the lower class. Do we rehash the... Uh his parents dying and all that or do we just we, start where that already happened it's funny because like the visual of bruce wayne like cradling his dead parents is kind of immortalized in this book and okay. only through like promotional art and uh and cover art oh. there is a flashback mm-hmm. uh and but it's poignant and necessary okay and we don't waste a lot of time with it it's Unlike just visual other batman books where it's gratuitous and yes just, like pointless and the fact is with the uh with this story this is kind of what started the whole like well year one did it i guess i'll also capitalize on the death of the waynes and showcase this oh, I see. then you're gonna throw the bat shattering a thing and the batman <laughs> the bat shows up later yeah and in fact like that's 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 where batman's origin diverges from his original origin okay. because in the original origin bruce wayne is in his study in his smoking jacket and he's musing about how to strike fear into the hearts of criminals everywhere and a bat flutters through the window and he says aha it's an omen i shall become a bat that's the fucking origin from like 1940 right because wow. they, they didn't start it's it with calm origin. yeah it's not insane well, it's not insane it's not even really that dramatic <laughs> right. it's just it's it's like a 50s b movie also, or a radio drama also it's not terrifying at all so no, it's really no. strange that he picked that no it's more like well, hmm. well he's like oh that was a little startling but yeah. being a, a grown man in the 1930s <laughs> naturally it doesn't terrify me in any way and i have no concept of rabies so i'm not the least bit perturbed by it yeah it, it's but like, i bet it would scare lesser people like criminals right it's a more rational origin for the batman yeah rather than a terror-induced like psychosis <laughs> Yes. It's like, no, he sat down and he thought about it and he came up with something that made sense yeah. based on inspiration for the world. He didn't, like, have an episode no, where nor it, did... like, changed his well, psyche. And thankfully... He could have been sick, like, a fever dream would change that whole thing. Yeah, he's but... stumbling through the library and suddenly a bat comes in and he's like, holy shit! I mean, yeah, like... very 80s of you. Like, that's the thing. Like, you didn't used to need it to be, like, crazy. No. Like... But then again, like, I... Per... It's funny because you compare, like, year one to Batman Begins and this looks subtle and diminutive. <laughs> because in the other one he falls in a cave yeah, and then bats right. encircle him like a typhoon and, and he slowly stands and then up. he like rises and you're like <laughs> you don't need to do that they did it fine yeah. 25 years ago in this one uh it, it's so cool the way james gordon and batman or bruce wayne both enter gotham city gordon takes the subway and it's shit because it's like 1980s New York, and it's just, it's so crap. And he's on an elevated train, and he's surrounded by the 
disaffected of Gotham. Right. Everybody's just like poor and miserable and sick, and they're all riding the train. They're just they're just regular schlubs trying to live their life, like James Gordon. Mm-hmm. And he's just sitting on a train. He's like, this city sucks. And Bruce Wayne is arriving via personal jet. And he's in the window, not unlike the 1930s counterpart when he was in his study. And he's, and, but he's thinking to himself, I should have taken the train. I need to see my enemy. Mm. But he didn't. But he didn't. And he's like, mistake number one. <laughs> and uh, it's stupid, stupid. It's cool because the, the story is punctuated through ongoing narration, which is a staple of Frank Miller, mm-hmm. uh, by both Bruce Wayne and James Gordon. Uh, Gore, and they're both kind of like in the form of shorthand notes. Like they're taking notes, okay. or they're writing in their journals, well, or it's a they're, memoir. they're detective logs. Exactly. Yeah. There's a couple of writing devices in this book that are distinctly year one and distinctly Frank Millerian. Okay. One of them is something that I thought was really cool, and I think it helps to propel the narrative. It makes it easier to read and faster to read. But when you read it again and again, it becomes more and more annoying and frustrating. Oh. And it's that... Uh, for the most part, people speak normally. But that's good. That's always good. That's good in your in your fiction. Yeah. But uh, there are, for the most part, moments where people speak in sentence fragments. Mm. They don't finish their sentences or even start them in certain sentences. They're just ideas. They're just the, the like the gist of the conversation, but they're saying it, mm. so it's weird. Like, there's a scene in which uh, Jim is getting a back rub from his wife, Barbara, who is pregnant at the time. Mm. And her line is, don't have to go to Metropolis for a man of steel. Could use a jackhammer on your back. (laughs) Said you'd unplug it when the phone rings. You know, like, are we only getting, like, parts of this? Like, what are you doing? It, 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 it's... You get it because you're kind of like, I think that what Miller's doing is he's like, you know what they're saying. And you, you, <laughs> you don't need st- prepositions. You don't need all that crap. You see, you know, it's like, Pro-line. why would I bog down all this beautiful Mazzuchelli art right. with all this with chicanery? All like, I just, you get the gist of the conversation. What matters is what's happening next. But what matters is what you're focusing on in the book, because that's what a comic book does. Yeah. It's like a movie, only it only highlights specific key elements because it's not moving. That also reminds me a lot of Spawn Batman. He did that he a did that lot, lot of fighting. Yeah. Be like, stupid punk, no discipline. Undisciplined. Can't punch. <laughs> Yes. It's, it's kind of a uh, Frank Miller shortcut to like badass dialogue is to like leave out words. Yeah, leave words out. Yeah, have your word be like, don't need to go to Gotham or Metropolis, made of steel, <laughs> Jack Hammer well, back. The You're like, yeah. like, whoa, 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 like he's up Batman, here. How about I kind of get it. Right. Just I don't soothe know. this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But know. for like Barbara Gordon to be talking like, I'm like that's, <laughs> that's weird. I read it in Batman's voice. <laughs> Everyone kind of talks like Batman in this world. Uh, so, maybe, oh, maybe that's a thing. Maybe it's like it's like a like cracked mirror version of reality that we're seeing. We're not seeing what these people are really saying. No, we're, we're seeing, seeing like, what, what Batman what Batman would perceive that they're saying. Except we're seeing it from two completely different vantage points. Yeah. Ah, but Batman knows what those are. Yeah, because he's are. Batman sees all. Because yeah. Batman is Gotham, yeah. and they're in Gotham, so we're seeing it through this whole thing. No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's a little bit more credit than I would give. Good old Frank. Uh, So, Gordon and Batman arrive in Gotham around the same time. And they both learn the ropes of what it takes to be a force in Gotham City. Uh, Gordon joins the force, and he's immediately teamed up with this crooked cop named Flass, who in this book is a crew-cut, super-huge X-Green beret. In the Hmm. movie, Batman Begins is a bad guy. In the most lazy casting ever. Fat guy, corrupt... Looks terrible. Looks like a bad guy. Looks like a corrupt cop to me. I don't have to yeah. know anything about him or have any character. Well, we don't have to do any well, character development on him. We don't have to waste precious movie nope. time. But you think he's yeah. Bullock? Yeah, from the Flash Cartoon looks show. like Bullock. Except Bullock was a good cop. Yes. Well, he's a good cop that skirted the line. Mm. But in this, he's a green beret, and he's like he's got a good smile. He's almost like the Harvey Bullock from Batman Earth One. Yeah, but he's corrupt through and through and he's a bastard at one point they're like they're riding in the patrol car and what was it uh flash calls him jimmy the whole time which gordon's like i'm older than you and i don't want you to call me jimmy and he's like then i'm gonna call you it all the time he's a bully yeah he's just a stupid brick-headed bully and he uh goes to 
he's like, hold on a second, Jimmy, I gotta make a quick stop. And they stop in this alley, and there's this guy who's just kind of in the alley. So you're like, okay, he's either whacked out, or he's selling something, or whatever. Or, or he's just in an alley, who knows? And Look, the, it's Gotham. People are in alleys all the time. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of alleys. The city's mostly alleys. It is. <laughs> and, uh, and he says something like, you know, oh, you've got... Like, uh, it looks like you're you haven't kicked your habit yet, and he just he basically just beats the shit out of this guy for no reason. Oh. And Jim's like, "What are you doing, man?" And he's like, "Oh, he's reaching for his knife." And he's like, "It's a comb." And well, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he goes like, "I'm only human, Jimmy." And James and, and Gordon's like, "I see what you're doing. Like, what you're do you didn't beat the shit out of this guy because it's fun, although you did that too. Well, yeah, you're doing that to show me." Like, what you're not afraid to do and right. what you're capable of. It's like training day. Yeah, it is training day. Only, like, 20 years before it came out. So, <laughs> eat it. Uh, so, Gordon's like, okay. And despite this kind of show of force from Flass, he's still kind of an on... He's, he's easily an honest cop. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gordon is Commissioner Loeb, who they use the same name for in Batman Begins, only in this version, instead of being, like, a big, tall African-American dude, he's a fat, old, kind of like Bob Newhart type character mm -hmm. who's obsessed with pop culture icons and takes a lot of cough drops. Like, very specific, kind of oh, wow. noirish character. Yeah. And, uh, he's you know, a character. He's a character. And, uh, you know, like, he does it, he, like, because you see, like, a, just a very quick image of his office, it's, he has, like, a drinking bird, he's got, like, a Mickey Mouse phone, he has, <laughs> it's like... It's kind of a joke. He's a joke. He doesn't take his job seriously. Exactly. Yeah. He's, or yeah. he's just incredibly eccentric. Well, he's both. Right. And he has, you know, everybody has a very specific way of talking. In, in, in Loeb's method, he punctuates everything by, like, agreeing with himself. Okay. And the, the fact is, the more you find out about the police force, the more you find out, like, everyone is in someone's pocket. Everyone plays ball. Everybody plays ball. Nobody stands up to anybody. It's like an impossible problem to solve. It is. And Gordon's no like, go I'm going to play hockey. Yes. <laughs> As the name suggests, it takes place over a year, and we don't get a full, kind of like, beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. We get a beginning, middle, and end broken up by Snippets. the months. Yeah. So each, you know, like February 12th, we see this scene. February 21st, we see this scene. And then just giving you an idea of how... And it also is realistic for me, because like it shows that like Bruce is back in Gotham. He goes to Wayne Manor. Alfred plays no part in this, by the way. He's yeah. in it, but who cares? Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird, because Frank Miller clearly does not give a shit about Alfred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, he's a butler. He is the butler. I don't know why everyone made him into this huge thing. Yeah, he just, he's, they just he just gets shit for him and answers the door. Like, because without him, he would die. <laughs> so, uh, and in fact, Alfred does one thing in this book, and you never see him do it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Bruce is in Wayne Manor, and he's just like, the mission has begun. Like, okay, here we go. And so the first thing he does is he he dresses as a wounded veteran, and he goes into the shittiest neighborhood. Like the Red Light District. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he gives himself, like, a scar, which is kind of like a play on his character. Because Bruce Wayne does have an underworld character that he plays mm -hmm. named Matches Malone. Yes! Okay! said that, I was like, I remember him chewing yeah. on something. It's, it it's, was a match yeah, stick. it's a match stick. He, he doesn't play matches in this but it's like mm. a prelude to matches okay. uh and he also you, dresses up in uh, dark knight returns he does yeah. yeah he dresses up a couple times in dark knight returns yeah. and one of them he plays like a bag lady yeah a goblin looking bag lady <laughs> he dresses up as matches malone in batman spawn uh the <laughs> shitty one yes batman spawn not spawn batman no no yeah. so in this he dresses as like a wounded veteran and this like seemingly like 13 year old girl named holly is a whore and she's flirting with him, or not flirting, but you know, whatever whores do to try to well, get Well, she's trying thing. to sell her wares. Exactly. She's a lady of the night. Precisely. Yeah. Well, she's a teenager of the night. Yeah, yeah. she's not even a, yeah, she's a child of the night. Yeah. And, and like, uh, just barely teenager. Yes. That is the beginning of the teens, that's 13. But yeah, yeah. She goes up to him, she's like trying to like lure him in, and her pimp is like, don't touch him. He is clearly a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, oh, Batman. Yeah. And Batman is like, maybe I'm not. Maybe you don't know. You don't know what I'm into. And he's like, he's like, I, and, he, and he's, his, his running monologue is like, I shouldn't push this pimp. Right. Because he's an idiot and he's low and like desperate. Who knows? Yeah. But I just can't help it. And he's yeah. giving the pimp some har a hard time. And watching from an, uh, a higher up uh, apartment is this dominatrix whore named Selena Kyle. And she is like keeping an eye on Holly. And the idea is that like she protects this girl. Does that and, explain the whip? Yes. Okay. The whip comes from Selena Kyle being a dom. 
And in fact, like her costume is a little bit of a variation on her outfit when she's, you know, whoring it up. <laughs> so then things go south for Scarface real fast. He immediately disarms the pimp, but little does he know that Holly... And then a hooker stabs him? Yes, Tiffany, and then a hooker stabs him. <laughs> the hooker is Holly. Holly stabs <laughs> Bruce Wayne in the leg. And he's like, what the hell's happening? And all the whores converge on him. Oh, shit. And he's beating the, And he's like, my first day out was, did not, I didn't, when I planned this, my day did not start thinking, I'm going to beat on at least five women today. <laughs> but that's what happens. And he's oh, immediately geez. attacked by all these whores. And he's just like kicking the shit out of them. Uh. And then Selena comes down and she lands like a cat and she hisses ah. like a cat what? and we know this because batman's internal like journal oh, of the God. night says and then this woman hisses like a cat <laughs> it's a little on the nose frank yeah <laughs> and she gives him like a kick like she does like she's done some training yeah and he's like yeah but no and just socks her in the jaw oh and then the cops show up and shoot him well, yeah, because he's beating up all these women. Just this lunatic in a veteran's <laughs> outfit <laughs> has been beating on all these women. Oh they shoot God. him? They shoot him because that's what cops do. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, trouble! Blam! Well, they're supposed to say freeze. They don't. And in fact, he lands and starts bleeding out and one cop turns to the other and he says, He didn't even move, man. And he said, He was gonna. <laughs> like... He was turning into a monster. <laughs> okay, thank God. What would be hilarious is if it was Flash that shot him. Yes, but it's not. No, actually, it's it's. I appreciate that because Flash is Gordon's nemesis. Mm -hmm. To have Batman fight Flash, especially now, no. In fact, B Gordon deals with Flash in that uh, Gordon is like making waves. I looked ahead. Yeah. Does Batman kill these cops? No. 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 Uh, no, he really fucks them up, though. Uh, <laughs> Some of them may have died of their injuries later. The, but that, no, I did not kill them. I, my my I character's preserved. I left it up to I pain. didn't kill him. I just stunned him. I, I didn't fucked kill him in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't kill him, but I didn't save them either. <laughs> and then later, fucking uh, Gordon is going to his car, and then he is just attacked by a bunch of dudes in masks. Just, they beat the shit oh. out of him. And the biggest one is clearly Flass. Right. He, and, he, and Gordon, rem like, notices because of his laugh. He oh. laughs like Flass. Okay. And so he's like, cool. And he's just like, I'll remember this. <laughs> he's just yeah. he's bleeding and his glasses are off and he's just like, okay, I got this. <laughs> this is the most Batman-esque Gordon has ever been. Yeah, Gordon is fucking awesome in this book. So Gordon is like, okay, cool. I gotta play it cool. And then he goes to work and he's, everyone's like, Jimmy, what happened to you? And he's like, I fell, you know. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you did. I, yeah, you I fell. Walked, I walked into a tree. Yeah. Well, you yeah. probably won't do that again. Yeah, huh? I would watch out. I'd watch your step. <laughs> if I were you, Jimmy. Yeah, do we need to be subtle? If everyone's in the pocket of, right. the, pocket yeah. of the mom, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't, why would you even wear a mask? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you know what's why? Why? Because uh, there is some element that is trying to do mm. good. For example, Harvey Dent, District Trinity, is trying to make a difference. Okay. okay. So they won't want you to think that there's no fighting. Yeah, there is. They're everywhere. Yeah, no. and, and there, there are a lot of them. Yes. Look, but... Gotham is corrupt. Yeah, Gotham's yeah. fucked, but... but there are still some good people in It's it. worth saving. Exactly. So uh, Gordon waits, and in this at this point it's, there's, it's snowing, and uh, Gordon just like stakes out the shack that Flass and his cronies play poker in. Okay. And he waits for Flash to get good and drunk and then get in his car and drive home. Then Gordon drives up next to him and runs him off the road. Oh, wow. And then when they run, they crash their cars, they both get out and Gordon tosses him a bat. And in the monologue for Gordon is, you know, like, the dude's huge, he's clearly had uh, green, ba green Beret training, but still, he deserves the handicap. <laughs> and you're like, What? So Flaz gets the bat, and then Gordon takes him apart like a high school science project. Oh, shit. And awesome. then he takes off all of his clothes and leaves him naked in the woods and handcuffed with his own handcuffs. Oh, shit. And he says something like... And then he calls the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> he, all I'm out of time yeah, before, before the animals. animals. <laughs> so, and he says something, or he, his monologue is something like, 
thank you, Flass. You've shown me what it takes to be a cop in Gotham City. <laughs> and he's like, because <laughs> I'm smaller... I get it now. Yeah, okay. I need to be a lunatic. <laughs> so, meanwhile, on the same day, more or less, uh, Batman has been shot, and he's thrown into the back of a cop car. Yeah. And <laughs> Wayne says something like, Pull over and let me out right now. And the cops are like, shut the fuck up, pal. And he, imme- he immediately breaks free of his restraints and then attacks the cops oh, wow. and manages to crash the cop car, but much worse than Gordon crashes Flash's yeah, car. Yeah, that thing is on fire. No, he crashed, into a, a t- he crashed oh. into a tanker. Oh, wow. And it fucking explodes. And ah. Wayne barely makes it out alive. As do the cops. He no. Wayne drags the cops out uh, of the car. Yeah, yeah, he drags their corpses out so they can be identified. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, and then he gets into his uh, Jaguar, which he had conveniently stashed in a parking garage somewhere near Whoretown. Mm-hmm. And he actually winds up passing Gordon on the road uh, to Gordon kicking the shit out of Flask. That's cool. He barely makes it home, and then he gets into his father's study, and he's bleeding to death. And he's and this is the scene where he where he becomes Batman. He's sitting in his father's thinking chair, and he's sitting across from a bust made of his father. Mm. And he's thinking to himself, Father, I think I may have to die tonight, because I am not effective. Mm. The mission isn't working, and I'm missing something. I don't know what it is, but if I can't figure it out, I have to die. If I ring this little bell that's next to my chair, Alfred will come, and his army training and, like medicine skills will save me right but if i don't i'll die in this chair and that'll be it but i need to come up with something and then a bat crashes through the window and lands on his father's bust oh, wow. and the two of them stare at each other and he says that's it i shall become a bat and then the last shot is him reaching for the bell and you're like oh and it, it, it that preserves the line mm-hmm. like the the fucking grandiose radio yeah. drama i shall become a bat but it's in this like blood loss <laughs> addled mind yeah and before he can even ring the bell everyone's like i was here the whole time yes yeah. and yeah. also there's no bat also you're talking yourself <laughs> i don't think you understand you're saying all this out loud i don't yeah. think you understand the second something gets dirty in this house i'm aware of it exactly you've yeah. been dripping blood everywhere you also crashed into one of our parked cars to get here <laughs> if i didn't hear you enter the door i heard you crash two vehicles together Oh, I also heard a bat crashing through a fucking window. Oh, so that. Excuse me, and he has a broom and he's chasing yeah, it out. I have to kill this bat because they have rabies. So, especially ones that break through your window. Yeah, right? Yeah, especially Instead massive of just bats. Bouncing off of it and dying. Exactly. Like, what really happened? If this was the Darren Aronofsky film, this yeah. is where I would see, like, bat cam. Yeah. Where, like, you see the bat coming mm-hmm. and it's seeing the window, the window and smash. No, that's funny because Joel Schumacher read this book and he liked it. Yeah, and he, he apparently wanted to make. The year one movie as well. Oh. And Warner Brothers is like, no, you're on a roll. You're making action figure commercials. So well, he put this, like, that bat in Batman Forever. Bat. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the behind the scenes shit for Batman Forever? They built a bat the size of a car and it, like, flaps and shit. Because there's a, because that whole flashback scene in yeah. that horrible movie, Batman Forever, is actually really extended and shit. And at one point, like, Bruce Wayne, like, little Bruce Wayne gets up when he lands in the cave and he sees the bat and it's flying towards him. Yeah, with the book. Yeah. When he gets back up, he's fucking Val Kilmer Bruce Wayne and the bat, like, looks him in the face. Like, this giant bat, like, looks him in the face and screams in his face. And I'm like, <laughs> that's cool! <laughs> Like, that's cooler than any one thing that takes place in Batman Forever is him face-to-face with the manifestation of his fears bat. in the form of a giant fucking bat. And then oh, after I man. shit myself, I knew what I had to become. <laughs> so I killed him and I made my costume out of its leathery skin. Because I needed a new pair of pants. Yeah. Oh my god. But like, oh my god, imagine if he just skinned him and wore that around. He's like, yeah. no, I'm Man Bat now. Yeah. <laughs> man Bat is me. Funk. He just hollows out the eyes. <laughs> That's a thing, man bad. Yeah. Kirk Langstrom uh, takes a serum. It's, not, man it's bad. not a person who's wearing a bad skin, though. No, it's a man who becomes a bad. That's, I think the scarier part is, the, is our idea. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, then we just see, like, some, some windows into, like, Gordon rising to the ranks at one point. Like, uh, it's we, a fucking training montage of him, like, shit. Of him just, like, I hate this job, I hate this gun, I hate these people, and he's, and each time he says I hate something, he's, he gets a little closer, he gets a little better. Um, Gordon, do, like, nego- does a hostage negotiation, which they wound up 
stealing and using and replacing him with Harvey Dent in a like viral promo for Dark Knight. Okay. Where like Harvey Dent does this scene where this scene is like there's a hostage negotiation going on and uh, there's this asshole SWAT leader who we'll see later named Brandon. Brandon is just a hothead who has an army at his disposal. And he thinks everything is just... Like, like, the more force you throw at it, yep, the better off the situation. Exactly. Right. So Gordon shows up. He like he goes, Brandon's there first. I have to beat him or get there or somehow because otherwise it'll be a, a bloodbath. Blood yeah. And he's right, got a baby on the way. Alone. He went in there alone. He went in yeah. there unarmed. He's just clearly like... He, he's just pushing it. Yeah. You know? He's and, towing the line and meanwhile, real close. Yeah, and meanwhile, his wife, Barbara, is pregnant and getting further and further along, right, which is right. probably stressing the shit out of her. And, uh, yeah, uh, but but because of that, because that moment, in front of everybody, in front of all the news cameras and shit, right. Gordon is labeled a hero. Mm-hmm. And so now, the people of Gotham City are really digging on Jim Gordon, mm-hmm. which is spelling trouble for Commissioner Loeb and for Brandon and, and for, for all Black. the bad cops. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then Batman shows up. So then Batman finally yeah. springs into action. There's three people. They're stealing shit out of someone's like apartment onto some uh, fire escape. Batman springs into action, and I appreciate the. This is where the running di- the running monologue works better than dialogue, better mm-hmm. than speech balloons, because he he roars at them like an animal. And it's not the first or last time that Miller will imply that Batman growls at people. Okay. And I think he says something like, you know, I give them a growl that I pulled from the Serengeti or something like that. Like, mm. like from some beast that people don't normally associate with or, am, or are familiar with, I've like summoned this growl that I've learned from my training. Mm. And I throw it at these thugs to scare them. Right. And it scares them. And he almost kills all of them. And, he, and he, so he eventually... Through some miracle, manages to not only take them out but not die. I love it because at one and point, not let the guy fall. They hit him with a TV, and the TV then falls, and he's like, he, he's still getting, and he's like, the TV hasn't even fallen yet, and I'm, I think I'm gonna fucking die. And there's just this great image of all of them, the three thugs and Batman, just lying on the scaffolding, like, oh, this is hard, Alfred. <laughs> One of the thugs picks up a cigarette and lights it, passes it to Batman. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, then we cut to a couple months later. He's getting a little better. Mm-hmm. And now, it's an issue. <laughs> fucking lineup. Yeah. Of potential, like, Well, here's a potential Batman. Batman. Well, there's a bat. Well, there's, just, there's a man bat. There's a dude in a cape. Or there's a guy who actually looks like Batman. No, that's and, not a man bat. That's a devil. Yes. Yeah. Well, and they're, by the way, these are from eyewitness accounts. Like Flass. Who is clearly in a neck brace and leg brace oh. because he ran into Batman too. Flash and and Flash's report is hilarious because he's like, I came upon a drug bust and it shows him like taking his cut from the drug deal. Uh. And Batman shows up and he's like, and this man who's clearly nine and a half feet tall and six hundred pounds attacked me. Uh. And like and ever and it's great because Flash's credibility slash ego have been completely destroyed you know the entire police force knows about jim gordon beating the shit out of him yeah. and Maybe now naked naked in the fucking woods and we now also know that flash has gotten his ass kicked by a lunatic in a costume mm-hmm. and so his description of getting his ass kicked is met with stifled laughter from his colleagues <laughs> which makes him really sad and gordon kind of sticks up for him a little bit oh. and he's like ladies like gentlemen gentlemen like let's hear the man out so you were saying about the nine foot tall bat monster that attacked you well, let's let let's let him talk. No, 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 I'm not so sure he sticks up for him. I was like, let him hang you take your brain, Oh take no, your yeah, a little it, bit more. It is that, but it's like uh, it shows the kind of even-handed move. Mm-hmm. You know, Jim Gordon isn't all baseball bats, <laughs> right? Right. Can, and Greenbury training he can be subtle. Too. Yeah. Uh, this also marks the introduction of Sarah Essen, who is a badass cop from another district who's brought in. She is Gordon's partner, and she also shares his. Uh, appreciation for justice. Wait, she's his partner now? She is... Merkel is his partner, but she is brought in as, like, another member of the team. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, and I think the implication is, like, she's brought in kind of like, we need more women to show that we're not, like, a sausage fest here. Like, <laughs> but she's also... Well, that also... there's diversity on the force. Exactly. And, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's a badass, too, and really cool, and... And then we meet uh, Carmine Falcone, a.k.a. the Roman, who is like the mob boss of Gotham City. And it's cool because Carmine Falcone appears in this book. He is thin. He's 
old. He is like svelte and put together. Like he looks like he could be a Batman villain, maybe. Okay. He's a little too old. A little, 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 I'm, a, I'm a, it's a little ahead of my time. You know, like I'm, like I'm a mob boss. Look, like, if this was 15 years ago, maybe, maybe I might put on a fucking costume and fight you. But for now, I, I've got this whole empire to run, and uh, Falcon and Batman's like, fuck that guy. <laughs> so like he sneaks up on him and he breaks into his house like late at night, and Falcon is like tied up like a fucking hog in his bed and they're like what's what happened he's like put the word out batman's gotta die and so naturally uh commissioner Loeb is suddenly really interested in capturing the batman when batman reveals himself to the criminal underworld yeah there's this moment where like Loeb and falcone just all the corrupt people in gotham are having dinner at this at, at I think the Romans' house. Okay. And they're talking about, like, what's to be done about mm. Batman and Gordon and Dent and all that shit. Yeah. And they're talking about, like, you know, well, maybe Batman. Like, you know, Batman, you know, maybe who knows. Maybe we could call him. Like, maybe we could get yeah, him. Yeah, he's crazy. Maybe he's, we could. He, exactly. He's not, like, a goody two-shoes. He dresses like a bat and beats people. Yeah. So then Batman sets up an incendiary next to their wall and blows up the wall in front of their dinner table. Oh, shit. And so, like, they're just like, oh, my God. He cu- Actually, he cuts power and then explodes the wall. <laughs> so then they're all sitting at the dinner table like, oh, my God. And they have this fucking, like, flambe dish in the middle of the table. And so that's the only light that's coming in. And Batman just silhouetted against the spotlight, which he sets up behind himself. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to be dramatic. you got to set up good lighting. That's what he does. And so he's standing there, and it's, it's just a gorgeous shot of him, just, like, silhouetted against, against darkness, where he's just like, Gentlemen, you've eaten well. You've eaten Gotham's wealth and its spirit, but now the feast is over, and none of you are safe. And he takes, like, the, the, the tray cover, and he puts out the fire. Uh. And then leaves. <laughs> and that's when Loeb is like, Okay, that's the end of Batman! Gordon, that's you! And Gordon winds up setting up, like, elaborate traps for Batman in the form of, like, he hires women to walk through dangerous alleys and hires cops to pretend to be muggers to attack, oh my like, God. those women so that Batman will spring into action and then all the cops that are laying in wait will catch him. And Batman's, like, watching this whole thing and he's like, Gordon's going through a lot of effort to set up these traps for me. <laughs> that's, well, that's it. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Oh. I that's almost really wish cool. he didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. Like, he was stopping a crime somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Right. He's just like, huh? <laughs> like, what? Damn it, no one's ever coming! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I love that shot. That's uh, really it's awesome. It's so cool. That's his mic drop. That is. None of you are safe. Kung! Dessert is served. <laughs> <laughs> You're just desserts. <laughs> How'd you like that one? I guess I should have stopped with none of, none of you were safe. Anyway, so... Uh, Hang on, I'm going to take this again. <laughs> Gentlemen. I'm gonna use Get your... the hell out of here, you crazy <laughs> asshole! Get your guns! Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So now not only does he know that, like, Batman's a thing, but he's not, like, scared of it. He's just like, all right, we got to kill this guy. Exactly. No, he's a... He's a... like That's cool. He's a mobster. He's like, you in a bat costume doesn't scare me. It is creepy and annoying. I'm scary. Because when I say something, the commissioner of police jumps. Mm-hmm. You know? I have, like, resources. Yeah. You're just one guy. You're a lunatic in a costume. Yeah. And I love it because Gordon is put on the case. Because he's the hero cop, and he's clearly better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. So Loeb's like, Gordon, you're on the Bat case. You're catching the Batman now. And Gordon's like, okie dokie. Because it's interesting, Gordon's... Like, the way, that I, the way that I look at it is, there are two men in this story who each have the same goal. And one follows all the rules, and the other one breaks all the rules. Mm-hmm. But they both arrive at the same place. Mm-hmm. And that's Gordon and Batman. So mm-hmm. Gordon is like, the commissioner gave me an order. So I'm going to... F-. It's not like he cares. He's just right. like, yeah, I'm going to take down the Batman. Well, he's a vigilante. Yeah. I mean, like, for in, in all... Yeah, he in, broke laws and stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to take him down. But, like, it's also my top priority, because he made me say it was my top priority. So he immediately goes to Harvey Dent, and he accuses him first. And there's a moment where, like... You know he, he's such a boy scout. Well, no, because Dent is Dent has a real fervor for justice, and he's mm-hmm. outspoken about what should be done about the Roman oh, and okay. about Loeb and shit. Right. And I love it because uh, Gordon shows up, and he and he basically like kind of like playfully interviews him a little bit, yeah. and then you know Dent's like, "Well, I'll see you later, Jim," and then Jim leaves, and then Harvey t- 
turns behind his desk and he goes, you can come out now. And Batman's hiding under the desk. As if to say that Batman sought out Dent first. Oh, wow. And Dent's like, yeah, Batman, I love the cut of your jib. And so that's where Batman's getting all his information from. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Essen is like, do you really think that Dent might be him? And Gordon's like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's got he's got the build, he's got the height, like he could be, and he's got the, you know, the, 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 the veracity and the, and the resources. He's attacking all the same people that Dent has a problem with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. So then, like, Sarah lights up a cigarette and she gives it to Gordon, and Gordon uh, remarks to himself that he can taste her lipstick on her cigarette and how lovely that might be. Oh. And you're like, oh shit. Oh, Jim, no. Yeah. no Jim. No, Baby Jim. on the way. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Oh, boy. At one point, they almost catch Batman. Uh, uh, there's a guy who, like, either passes out, he falls asleep at the wheel, and he's driving this truck. And he almost hits this homeless lady. And Gordon, like, drives his car up to the fucking out-of-control vehicle. He's like, Sarah, take the wheel! He jumps out of the car. He grabs the wheel. He's, he's pulling it. And he's like, I'm not going to save this woman. And then Batman saves her. And yes. Batman's taken down. And Sarah has the gun trained on him mm-hmm. when, he gets, when he comes to. Right. And Gordon just emerged from an auto wreck. Right. So he's out of it. Yeah. And... Uh, so Batman immediately subdues Essen and then makes a break for it into a warehouse. Mm-hmm. Gordon calls in the Batman sighting. Yeah. And so Brandon is like, Batman, got it. No problem. That building that he went into is, uh, cited for demolition anyway. Send in the choppers with the bombs. So they fucking drop a bomb on this tenement. Oh my God. Killing a couple of homeless people. <gasps> oh, but shit. fuck them. Right. Because I'm an asshole. Yeah. So well, I destroyed their home It was anyway. supposed to be abandoned. It's not my fault. Yeah. What else was I supposed to do but blow it up? Exactly. Batman was in there. So the explosion happens. Batman, uh, a, a piece of like shrapnel or whatever, hits Batman's belt, mm. igniting it and making it useless. Batman oh, has to geez. ditch the belt. He barely makes it out. And then Batman is pinned in this burning wreckage warehouse, mm. surrounded by this elite team of SWAT cops. Um, meanwhile... That know what to do. Yeah, that know exactly what to do and where he is and how to fucking kill him. So, <laughs> Selina and Hiley wind up joining with everybody. Like, basically all of Gotham shows up to watch to Batman watch die. Wow. Oh! Because the word is out. I thought it was everyone shows up to, like, help put out the fire. Oh, yeah. And I'm no. like, wow, Gotham pulled together! And that's Dark Knight Returns. Ah. It won't happen until 25 years after Batman's Prime. But... That the Gotham finally pulls together, but no. In this one, they're like, "Yeah, like whoa, like what a Fuck light show!" The bat. Yeah. So Batman and and like the, it's an awesome scene that they kind of adapted a little bit in Batman: Mask of the Phantasm, which mm. is an amazing a- animated movie where we see like Batman versus the cops in an abandoned warehouse, and it's really fucking cool. Mm. Batman basically picks apart the entire team. Nice. Uh, he takes out Brandon first with a blow dart, and he's like, "I have one dart." In my glove, mm-hmm. I they there there are do, there's a dozen men with machine guns, mm-hmm. and at one point like they and he tosses them a baseball bat and says, "Better give them the hit." Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> almost goes there. Uh, at one point, like the fucking they, uh, one of the SWAT cops is scared by a cat, it's a damn cat, and then later they see it again, and so he tries to shoot at the cat, and Batman like runs after it, throws it out the window. <laughs> And uh, but they're on the first level, and he gets shot. When and he, he gets shot that for it. The window. And uh, stupid cat. Yeah. And <laughs> fuck you. I love you it because there's a moment where um, Batman. We see him earlier before he becomes Batman, where Bruce Wayne's on the Wayne grounds, mm-hmm. and he's training. And there's a moment where he's like using his good leg, and he's and he just he kicks this tree in half with like just one kick. Where he's Whoa. Like, Oosh. And you're like, cool. And then he's like, he's trapped in this warehouse, and there's one support beam. And they shot him in the good leg. And he's like, yeah, dude, the good leg. And he fucking does the same move. And takes out the support beam. Takes out the cops. <laughs> nice. Barely escapes with his life. And then he, he targets the one guy. And he's like, you're the one who tried to shoot the cat. <laughs> and then what? he grabs him. And he puts him through the building. Oh, my God. And then... That's fantastic! And then... <laughs> I love animals! Yeah, and then Batman hits this little doohickey that was developed by Wayne Enterprises that he specifically commissioned that is not going to be available for retail. <laughs> that is a sonar detector that pulls all the bats from the cave and brings them to him. It's the same fucking thing from Batman Begins. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. When he... That's awesome. In Batman Begins, when he's like... He hits the button on his foot. Like, I brought back up. Well, it's before even before that. He pushes a button on like the heel of his foot. It's in this book. 
where he pushes the heel. That's, oh, so he, they just stole it. Yeah, they just ripped it completely right out of this book. Yeah. No, he pushes it yeah. first, and he says, like, you know, it's going to take them a couple... I gotta. I, I actually can't just run away. I right. need to stall them right. to buy the bats time to get here. Yeah. So then uh, Batman, pl- like, blasts the wall through with this fucking cop and the and, and the crowd cheers all of a sudden like batman because like, they all know about the swat teams and how mm. fucked up they are right, right and like the whole crowd is all cheering until the bats come <laughs> and the cheers turn to screams and the bats just fucking tear through the crowd and then batman runs underneath the cloud of bats steals a cop motorcycle <laughs> and then drives away oh my god if, and if the bats were tearing through awesome. the crowd and attacking people at the same time, and yeah. it turned into like a horror show. Right, it's, uh, it's more that just, would be hilarious. Yeah, yes. It's more just horror inducing. It's just right. scary. They're not gonna attack people. No, bats don't do that. But uh, uh I beg to differ. Actually, <laughs> actually, some of them do because Holly and Selena have to get special shots for their bat bites. Oh well, yeah. If you get bit, yep. Like they it's got not bit. Gonna, it's, it could be rabies. Like it's not gonna hurt you exactly. otherwise. But, no, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. And so as Bruce Wayne, he goes skiing. Uh-huh. And he actually is, like, skiing, but the, the, the cover story is that Bruce Wayne went skiing for the first time, mm-hmm. and he fell, uh-huh. so he has the casts to explain his okay. injuries. Uh, at this point, Gordon <laughs> is hot on the trail of Bruce Wayne. And he's like, Bruce Wayne, I think, is Batman. Oh, he's, shit. He, he, fits the, he fits the size, and Essen's the one who actually says, like, you know, this kid's parents were murdered here. Like, he's got motive. Right. And Gordon's like, I could kiss you, Essen. That's... And you're like... <gasps> that's, like, the most far-fetched motive <laughs> ever. Well, it's, well, I assume there's other stuff. There's but, other yeah. mitigating circumstances, but it's more like, where's Bruce Wayne that. all the time, you know, but yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, uh, it's at that point, after Batman takes down the SWAT team, that Selina Kyle is like, I am done whoring. She takes out the oh, wow. fucking pimp, and she makes herself a costume. That's inspired by Batman. Of that's course, being cool. her Catwoman costume. Yeah. But her plan is to steal. She's like, I'm not. I'm done whoring. <laughs> yeah. How about stealing? Yeah. So she and Holly go. And, and by the way, Holly doesn't become like, you know, cat girl or anything. Like She's kitten. Just, yeah. <laughs> she just she just comes along for the ride. I don't know what the whole deal is with Holly. It's Catwoman and Holly. Yeah, and Holly. She never goes Cat- with her. And Selena's like, why won't you put the costume on I made you? <laughs> Holly's like, that ain't me. <laughs> that ain't me, bitch. Uh, no, at some point, like, uh, Holly just stays at the apartment, just, like, to Aww. collect stuff. No, eventually, Gordon and Essen do wind up, hook it up. And yeah, they hook up saw that. for a while. Gordon and Essen share a cigarette, they share stories, they're talking about how she was actually from Chicago, and how, like, they should have bumped into each other, but they never did. Like, they were almost, like, destined to be together. Oh, oh and the the oh. rain the rain comes in, and so they share a doorway. You know, they uh-huh. hide in, like, an archway. Uh, she's like... Christmas yeah, and Thrones. then they kiss, yeah. and it's over. Yeah. And then, I, and, it, and then we get the full page of one of my favorite shots from the, from this book, and it's Gordon holding his re, his service revolver at the foot of the bed where his sleeping pregnant wife is, and he's just like and he just thinks to himself, two shots. That's all it takes, and I'd be free. <laughs> I'd be free. <laughs> no, I'll just I'll just take her out. Her the baby. Yeah. And then like you I can be like, oh my and I'll, god. And I'll blame it on I'll blame it on some street punk, right? And then I'll turn into everything I hate. I thought I knew how the world worked, mm-hmm. but I don't. Like I thought I knew how to be a man, right. but I don't. Like there's this guy who dressed like a bat and he's a bad person, but he also saved that woman and he saved that like he didn't kill the cops right. and he saved he that saved cat. The cat. He paid for the suit. And when when Batman escapes, he then goes he breaks into a men's shop and then he just buys a suit and he leaves money on the counter and like you know disappears into the crowd like mm-hmm. he paid for the suit he fucking like right he, he like, didn't have to do any of that yeah but like why Hold, the holding the gun though is what well because it, it, it's it's everything that he hates about the job mm-hmm. like it's it's an instrument of murder it's an instrument of power right and batman it, doesn't use a gun exactly like, it's like more effective in some ways exactly and also like a gun can be used is actually the token weapon of his enemy. Yes. So he tries to break up with Essen after a while, but it doesn't take. Mm-hmm. Uh, bat- and uh, at that point... Wait, like, it doesn't take, like... Like, if they just... can't they, do it? They can't. They can't. Oh, they just themselves. can't resist each other? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, what's it called? Actually, she puts in for a transfer. Oh, shit. Oh. And he's like, she's... The, the love of my life is leaving. Like, That's... 
That's sad on too many levels. Exactly. Damn it. No, that's why this book is amazing, because it's not just like, well, then Jim Gordon's a bad man. Like, no, you know what? Like, what is a bad man? Like, what does that mean? But uh, there's a moment where um, one of the junkies, whose name is Skeevers, and his lawyer is like, you should stop snorting coke. Like, it's bad for you. And he's like, yeah, whatever. So she leaves the room, and then they hear a smash, and she's like, everything okay? And he's like, yep. And because Batman's got him. And he's uh-huh. just like, say, yeah, say you're fine. <laughs> and then and then that's when we get like some lines from Batman yeah. where he actually speaks out loud. And it's one of my favorite lines where he's just like, you can never escape me. Bullets can't, bullets don't harm me. Nothing harms me. But I know pain. Sometimes I share it with someone like you. <laughs> and then Skeevers immediately appears oh, in Gordon's God. office. And he's like, I'd like to st- turn over state's evidence, please, <laughs> against Flass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so uh, then Loeb hears about it, and Loeb reveals the photos he has of him with Essen. Oh. And he's like, <gasps> oh, shit. I think it's Falcone's nephew is the guy who's like been tailing Gordon and taking photos. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, Barbara and Jim actually go to the Wayne Manor to interview Bruce about being Batman. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wait. What? <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, ostensibly it's about something else. Well, no, it is. It's it, no. He's like, I'd like to interview everybody that could be possibly Batman. Oh, and he goes and he meets with, uh, you know, with Alfred and with uh with Be- with Bruce and Bruce has hired some ridiculous non English speaking model to mm-hmm. appear with him, and he's a real pain in the ass. Like you know, he's just like he's drinking yeah. his champagne, which is actually ginger ale, uh-huh. and. Uh, What's it called? Uh, you know, and he puts on a cover story about like how he was skiing and he hurt himself, and that's where the injuries came from, and blah blah blah. Does uh-huh. he offer anyone else champagne? He That'd does. Be really funny. He <laughs> does. He says like, "Oh, Alfred, be a lamb and get me more champagne. This bottle seems to have evaporated," which I love. <laughs> he brings Barbara with him on. Yeah, that's and it's just, it's just so that we can have this scene uh-huh. where Barbara and Jim are in the car, and he's ba- and she goes like, "Do you really think that he could be Batman? I mean, look at him." Like he's he's got the model. He's he went on yeah. like he's billion. He's he has, clearly not. He has Batman. no reason to be Batman. Right. And he's like, men would go far to keep their secrets. Damn it. Uh. All right, Barbara, honey, there's something we need to talk about. <gasps> oh, oh shit. good job, Jim. So Jim comes clean. Then he turns on Flass, and I love it because uh. Flass Flass in the interrogation room, and he says something like, "Skeevers has all the evidence against you. He's going to talk about it." And Tim Flass says, "That is, if Skeevers alive enough to testify." <laughs> And his lawyer goes, oh, my client didn't mean that. <laughs> and you're like, god damn it. And then the phone rings at Gordon's apartment. Barbara answers it. Yes, I know about Detective Essen. Please don't call here again. What I don't like about this turn for Barbara hmm. is the art decision. Now, Mazzuccelli does an amazing job with it. Mm-hmm. And it's clearly a direction from Frank Miller. When we first meet Barbara, she is young, vivacious, and, like, and pretty. Mm-hmm. She is like you know, ridiculously tossed hair. Yeah. Even when she's pregnant, she's fun and, like, gorgeous and, you know, whatever. Right. The, after the, uh, after the adultery, Mm -hmm. her hair gets straight and plain and her expressions are always depressed and sad. Mm. She never comes out of this. Right. In All-Star Batman and Robin, which is technically Frank's sequel to this, she then crawls into a bottle and never comes out. Mm. But don't worry, eventually, she dies and then Jim can be with Sarah. So that's fun. (laughs) But I, mean, I guess it's just to show you the cost. Yes, and I love that shot because it's her in the foreground and Jim in the darkened room just like, yeah, yeah so that's fun. Yeah. I sure did that. Yep. Sorry. Uh, so then she gives birth and they have their, they have their son, mm-hmm. James Jr. Uh, and, uh, and then Batman moves on the Roman. And then and Barbara's like, don't worry, James Jr. I'm sure that he'll grow up one day and love someone more than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, basically know that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so Selena is gonna steal from the Roman. She's like, "Fuck them! Like, fuck that fat cat okay. mob boss! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fuck his life up." And Batman <laughs> is going to the Romans at the same time because Batman knows that. Uh, the nephew is like the enforcer and that when Gordon and Bolt and, uh, and, um, Dent move on Flass and Loeb and in connection with that, the Roman. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be reprisals and Batman wants to know what it is. 
Mm-hmm. So Batman is like kind of just just hiding on the compound and recording their conversation and getting information about it. And then Catwoman shows up. And she... And people think that like she works with him because she's a lunatic in a costume. Well, that's a good association to make. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's funny because like she shows up and it completely derails the conversation from work to let's take out this right. bat flunky. And Batman immediately takes out all the guards. Mm-hmm. So they're all knocked out. And Catwoman's like, whoa, what just happened? And I love it because Batman just says something like, you wasted my time. Uh. <laughs> and then leaves. And... Uh, earlier in the scene, Selena was talking about how she's like, they think I work with him? Like, that's bullshit. You know what? It's because he's because he doesn't kill anybody. You know what? I know what to do. I'll scratch him in the face and discar the Roman, thereby showing that I mean business. Differentiating myself from Batman. Why well, doesn't she just kill okay. him? Okay. Because, be, because of... I can't It's talk. what she just says! Like, there's a... There's a okay. It disassociates... Like, oh, it's because uh, he won't kill people. Yeah. Well, I'll show them I mean business. Well, he won't... Rip even, out his heart. He also yeah. won't... Uh, he also won't disfigure people. Yes. It's kind of still... It's enough. I he think. doesn't have a... Th- he doesn't have a, uh, a signature... No. Move, he, like, mark that he puts on people. Exactly. Do that. So she scratched him in the face, and it's the same... And that's when you... When you realize, if you're reading it, you know, after the fact, that... The Long Halloween is essentially year two. Because in Long Halloween, Carmine Falcone is the main bad guy, and he has those scratches on his face. Oh. It's a carryover. Um, also, Falcone never existed before this book, and so he's, you know, carryover anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so Batman's listening to the, the tape he took of the Roman. He's basically saying, like, Roman has a, has a line where he says, like, once a man becomes a father, he's never truly free. Hmm. Batman's like, they're going to dig up the corpse of my father. <laughs> no! You don't know who you are, Batman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So Batman immediately, uh, but it's daytime. And he's and, and that's another carryover from the Batman Nolan movies where he's like, never during the day. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm Batman. I don't, I don't operate in the daytime. Right. So he puts on like a biker's costume and like a helmet and he drives the motorcycle over to Gordon's apartment. Okay. So Gordon tries to reach Barbara at some point and mm-hmm. he can't get her. And he's like, oh, mm. shit. Yeah. So he rushes over to his apartment. There's Roman's nephew and his, like, thug. And they've got the baby and Barbara. Oh, jeez. And they're like, okay, we're going to take your kid and your wife. You wait for my signal. And, or you wait for your call. And Gordon's like, nope. Boom. He just starts firing. And he kills one oh, guy. Shit. But he doesn't get the other guy. And the other guy's like, oh, what, your fucking mind? And he just <laughs> takes the baby. And, and, and then Batman shows up a few seconds later. In his conspicuous biker's costume. So Gordon shoots him in the chest. Oh, fuck. And then steals the motorcycle and then chases after them. Does oh, he wow. Does he shoot Batman just to steal the motorcycle? No, he shoots him because he thinks that's like backup for, part for of, the yeah. Roman. So Barbara's left with Wayne. And I think Gordon says something like, watch him. Mm-hmm. And gives him one of her gu- gives her one of her guns. And uh, so Gordon steals Batman's motorcycle and chases after the car. And... Yeah, because she doesn't shoot him. Yeah, well, he tells and, her not to. Yeah, because Wayne's basically <laughs> like, "I'm not gonna let your baby die." Well, he you, takes off the helmet. Yeah, he's like, "You have to let me. You have to let is. me go." Yeah. Well, she doesn't see who he is because he's like shadowed. Oh. She just like he's she just knows. She just knows somehow. Yeah, but he's like, "I'm Bruce? not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna let your family die." He takes off the helmet. Fucking steals someone's ten speed. <laughs> Everyone's stealing vehicles here. Yeah. I gotta get him. He on this. chases after them. Oh, uh, Gordon shoots out one of the tires of the of the getaway vehicle on a bridge. Uh-huh. And uh, okay, Gordon is simultaneously riding a motorcycle and, and firing. firing a gun, and he neither crashes, crashes nor misses his shot. No. no, he's a fucking badass. Yes, he also fucking, bravo. <laughs> he's also been training with this gun since the beginning of the book. So How I'm gonna does he give ride it to a motorcycle. Him. Is my question. I don't know because that's insane. <laughs> well, fucking who cares? No, so... it's, it's awesome. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not challenging it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying like that's fucking badass. Well, it is. <laughs> he's a badass. The nephew like beats the shit out of Gordon. And Gordon and the nephew grapple while he's holding the baby, and then uh, the the dude drops the baby, and oh, the baby fuck. just falls off the fucking bridge, and Batman dives after the baby first, catches the baby, and lands in the mud. Wow! And uh, Gordon, by the way, during the fight, gets his glasses knocked off. So when ba- Gordon gets down onto the the the, the ground. And meets with, like, the broken body of the nephew and Bruce Wayne holding the baby. <laughs> he says, like, he realizes, like, this is Batman. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like Batman just saved my son. Yeah. And who else? Would and I love it because there's there you go. You got Bruce Wayne standing before Jim fucking Gordon. Barbara's all the way up on the bridge. She can't see who it is either. Well, she ran there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't really get far. Yeah. No, they got so, like like a block. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I love it because Gordon's holding his son, and Batman's standing in front of him, and he says, "You know, I'm practically blind without my glasses." You should probably get out of here. And I love that line because you know he sees who he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But he's like, you know, well, that's the story that I'm going to give to everybody. Right. And that's how I'm going to treat us from now on. Right, right. Because you saved my son. It's it's cool because, like, at some point or another in the book, Batman basically says, like, there's one honest cop left in Gotham, and I need him. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to be his friend. Right. And so when they turn state's evidence over on Flash... They're like, it turns out Flash wasn't as stupid as we all thought. Apparently he kept notes on every conversation with every major person, every major player, in the, and he got a plea deal, and they brought down Loeb, and they brought down Fla- they brought down everybody. Nice. Fucking the, old, all, the whole house of cards comes down, and out of it, they need more people, and so they make Jim Gordon a captain. Nice. And uh, Jim Gordon, cool. uh, and the book ends... Exactly the same way the Batman Begins ends. Yeah. <laughs> Only uh, it's with a cigarette and Batman. <laughs> and uh, I love it because... So Gordon's basically like... you know, It's, it's the, a it, pipe, not a cigarette. Oh, it's a pipe, that's right. It's, it's basically setting up like the future for Gordon. Because remember, this is setting the precedent for what we're already seeing in Batman in 1987. Like, mm-hmm. Batman was not... They didn't reboot it and, sh- get, and start it from here. Mm-hmm. They weren't like, okay, we're going to start here and then go to year two, year yeah. three, year <laughs> 35. Like, no. They're, they're just like, okay, this is this yeah. is like the groundwork. So, uh, the classic image of Jim Gordon, it's hard to imagine nowadays, but back then, was a pipe. Mm-hmm. So, smoking a pipe, and he says like... And he's basically narrating what happens. Like, mm-hmm. well, so this is the year, and this is what happened, and it's been crazy. And as for me, well, there's some real trouble growing, like brewing around here in Gotham. Some lunatic just threatened to poison the water supply. Like, but I've got a friend who's working on the case, and he says he might be able to help. Yeah, the person who poisoned, the threatened to poison the water supply, calls himself the, the Joker. Joker. Oh, which is why when Batman Begins ends, mm-hmm. and he's on the roof, I'm like. We're getting that scene from year one, and we fucking did. <laughs> yep, and it was great. Yep, it's just a, and and just, it works here, works in that movie, it works no matter where you fucking put it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, year one set the precedent for like the darker, grittier. Well, Dark Knight Returns really set up the precedent for like a darker, grittier Batman. Yeah, this lays the foundation for a darker, grittier origin story. Right, you in, know, in continuity, in continuity, so. and also like a a grittier. Gotham. Yes, Gotham yeah. is a place you don't want to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny because they would do sequels, like they did a year two, which was I think drawn by McFarlane. Is it's... Joker in it? No, the Reaper is in it. The Reaper. That classic Batman villain. <laughs> uh, also, Rachel Dawes first appears in that book. Oh, I thought she was invented for the movie. No, nope, she was know. a character in year two. Everybody's least favorite Batman story of all time. <laughs> so least favorite, in fact, that after Zero Hour, they said it never fucking happened. Oh wow! And then. They made Long Halloween, and that's technically year two. Oh, wow. So, Long Halloween is year two. Okay. Uh, and then Dark Victory is year three. Uh, they did a year three, and that's like the retconned origin of Dick Grayson. Oh. Uh, but then they actually did like a sequel to Long Halloween and whatever. Uh, Zero Hour was like their crisis mm. in, ni- in the 90s, where they're like, let's clean some things up. For example, uh, in, uh, in year one... Remember when Selena Kyle was a whore? No. She was a thief who was in disguise as a whore and never actually had sex with anybody for money. Who cares? Uh, Because we have Catwoman fans. Yep, because there's a book called Catwoman that we're putting out right now. And if we establish that she's like some prostitute, uh, it looks bad. I see. So, no. So they de-prostituted... Catwoman, and I think that was the only retcon from from Zero Hour. But they would essentially they would like they would chip away at it mm-hmm. over time until eventually uh, we got to the New Fifty Two and Scott Snyder rewrote it. Yeah, just did Zero Year, which is his year one. Yeah. So this book is timeless, a classic. They've done three versions of it. And by versions, what? I mean like they printed three different versions of it. Oh, okay. Three or four, but like uh, they called Mazzuchelli in like the 90s or the early 2000s and they said like would you like to help us you know put out this prestige format for the book mm-hmm. and indeed they did and uh 
it's great. But then, maybe a few years ago, they did it again without anyone's consultant. Oh. And it's really shitty. <laughs> so you gotta watch which version which you, get. you get. Yeah. Uh, and it, this one's nice. But they only did it to coincide with the release of the year one animated movie. Oh. So... But I will put a link in the description box below this video for the good prestige version of this book. This is a great copy. It's just a... This is from 1988, this one right here. Yeah, it's just a, yeah. it's just a trade paperback. You know, yeah. they, they print it for years. It's always been in print. They just mm. like... It's just a floppy whatever. Yeah. But the one the that I'm putting in the description has, has a kind of like a richer color. They re... Oh, they kind of like, they kind of like reintroduced uh, the colors. Okay. And really played with it a little bit more. And, and uh, it's printed on... Uh, more like less glossy paper stock mm. explore the palette they really do <laughs> and it, it's it's quite and it's I mean big it. and it's a explore the palette <laughs> and it's also bigger okay which i like i didn't think i would and mm. you know, they make these absolute versions of comics yeah. where i'm like who the fuck has time for this yeah. then i got alien which is all like just the pencils from fucking uh, uh walt simonson and I never go back. All, I want all my books to be this fucking big and no color. And just like the pencils with the coffee stains. Well, this is a, a, you feel like you're seven again. Yeah. <laughs> you really do. But B... B, it's you, massive! You, can, you, just, you really see... Like, you can really appreciate the art. And it's like, some of those books... You know, some, some comics you don't need the Absolute Edition. <laughs> like, some books you're like, like, do I need the Absolute Edition of, like, the Clone Saga? No. But this, yeah. Uh, this and, you know, Dark Knight, like... You know, they do Batman black and whites where it's like they pull the colors and they just show you, like, the inks. Like, fuck yeah. Like, those are awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love Mazzuccioli's art. I never liked... When I was a kid, I avoided this book because I didn't really? like it. I thought it was too simple. Because I was... The art? You know, like, a, this isn't the Batman I want. Well, I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, so I'm like, what? where are the pouches and, the, and all the brush oh, strokes? Like, yeah. why is everybody, like, well, hyper-detailed? Batman's costume in particular is very subdued. Yeah, it's very scaled back. Yeah. Which I like. And, and not detailed. No. You know, it's just gray and black. Yep. It also uh, helped to reinforce the yellowless yes. bat symbol. Yeah. Which they've used so much, I kind of miss it. Mm. Like, I prefer to have, like, some kind of color. Yeah. Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli. Uh, I love this val this volume. I always come back to it. And everybody says, like, what Batman book would you recommend? It's always Dark Knight Returns, Year One, fucking Long Halloween, mm -hmm. the early years, and the last year. Yeah. I kind of want yeah. to see a Jim Gordon book, book where Jim Gordon is dealing with the Batman villains. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have to, like, actually solve the problem, but he has to be working on cases. Yeah. And doing the work. I'd like to see that. I think that'd be cool. I think there are books like that. They actually did, used to put out a book yeah. where uh, it was where it was just the, it was just the Gotham City Police Department oh. and what they deal with every day. That's like but that I, show Gotham. Yeah, no, only it was good. People liked it. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I want to see that, but I don't want to see like the one now that's out now where Jim Gordon. Oh, is super in a heavy. Suit. No, you don't want to see Jim Gordon like, as fucking RoboCop. No, you want to see Jim Gordon. What? As I want to see Jim oh, Gordon be Jim Gordon. It's a, it's a scene, man. That's I didn't know that was a thing. You know, we'll have to do it on back issues when it's when it's all done. But yeah, yeah Jim Gordon's years, Batman. There's also a sequel to this called The Man Who Laughs, which I think Brubaker wrote, which is the story of Good Joker, Poison, Poison Reservoir. Yeah, that's the no. story. And, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So there's like three sequels to this. Oh, yeah. There's like, like year a... two, Long Halloween, that. Yep. Man Who Laughs. There's so many. Yeah. Okay. Year two, though, don't... Don't, don't bother. No. It's, <laughs> was like... it written by Frank Miller? No. Oh, okay. Oh, no. oh well. That was just... they No, they were like, what do people like? That? Make an honor. By the way, like, the, the cover, you're like, oh, cool. Because it's like... Because the Reaper was the inspiration behind the Phantasm from Mask of the Phantasm. Oh. It's like a dude with a fucking, hmm. like... You know, does he have a scythe? Yeah. Does he say you reap what you sow? I don't or something. So. He says he says nothing interesting. He's totally don't lame. Don't fear the reaper. I mean, wait. You totally should though. Fear the reaper. Because I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, Blue Oyster Cult had it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he should call himself the Blue Oyster Cult. That'd be cool. He's blue. He throws pearls that are bombs. <laughs> and he has a whole lot of followers. That just many followers. His, yeah. His will. Yeah, I love it. There you go. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. So long.